I am a sucker for as seen on TV gimmick fishing lures, and I absolutely love throwing old school crankbaits for bass. So today on Retro Bassin, we're gonna combine my two passions and look at the top 10 gimmick crankbaits in my tackle box. Stick around because we are gonna be doing some awesome underwater footage of each of these 10 baits, and you are not gonna wanna miss it. Coming in at number 10 on this list is the incredible Dance's Eel from none other than Bill Dance himself. And when it comes to any product endorsed by Bill Dance, let's just say I am caught hook, line, and sinker. Constructed from space age hydrofoam, uh, the incredible Dance's Eel was truly a unique crankbait. Let's talk about its appearance for just a second. If it resembles an eel, that is no mistake. That was definitely intention when Bill designed this bait. It does have a really unique eel tail, which when you get to the underwater footage, you'll see it's got a really cool action. One of the interesting things about this crankbait, it, it is actually a sinking crankbait, and you can fish this really at any depth you want to, so long as you've got the patience to let it sink to the bottom. Here is an old school package of Bill Dance's eel, and you can see a, a little bit younger Bill Dance on the package. The eel was also sold in kits like this, Bill Dance's eel pack, which <laughs> gave you a variety of different sizes and colors of the bait. But now let's talk about how this thing performed in the water. No surprise, it really does have a nice serpentine action and you can really appreciate what that eel tail does under the water. It really goes along at a pretty nice clip and when you add the fact that it sinks, it is actually a pretty versatile crankbait. I also slow down the footage so you can get a look at it there and yeah, it has got a really, really nice undulating action that, oh man, you almost have to fish to appreciate. Coming in at number nine on the list of my craziest crankbaits is the Joe Camel Humpy from Rebel Lures. Back in the day, you could get just about any piece of tobacco-related paraphernalia you wanted from the Camel store, including shirts, coolers, and even fishing lures like this. The Humpy came in a couple of different variations, including this little topwater, which sort of looks like a camel-patterned head and tiny torpedo. But the bait I was most excited to get on the water was this one. While I don't know, I'm sure that the rebel aficionados out there know whether or not this humpback design came first or the humpy lure came first. Either way, I was really curious to see what this little crankbait did in the water. Underwater, the Joe Camel Humpy has a nice classic crankbait action, and I definitely think that it would be pretty effective on largemouth, smallmouth, and even spotted bass. The only real issue with this lure is the fact that it comes in only one color pattern, and that is the uh, Joe Camel Tan. It definitely looks like a little camel head under the water, but hey, you never know when that might be needed to match the hatch. Coming in at number eight is a really unique crankbait from Whopper Stopper. I'm not sure if this thing is called the worm or the lizard, but it is definitely one of the wildest crankbaits that I've ever thrown and definitely not one that I have seen or read a whole lot about. It is a solid plastic two-piece construction. It is thin, sort of like a worm, and you notice it's got a nice little built-in curve to it, which is really unique. There is a hinge separating the front from the back, and on either side, there is a nice heavy-duty treble hook. The lip itself is sort of a heart-shaped metal lip, and yeah, no surprise, this is a sinking crankbait. Truth be told, I had never thrown this Whopper Stopper bait before, so I was really curious to see what it did under the water. Well, first things first, you definitely have to let this bait sit for a second, otherwise it might go nose up and sort of plane toward you. So when I was throwing it, I definitely had to uh, cast it out there and let it sink for a second to get that lip engaged. Underwater, it really doesn't have so much of a serpentine action as it almost sort of looks like a, uh, I don't know, a Senko on Red Bull. It's really got a unique wiggle to it, which is much more, I would say, vibratic than eel or snake-like. 
even though it doesn't contain rattles, I highly suspect that with that crazy vibrating action, it puts out a pretty serious sonic profile. Number seven on the list is a very unique crankbait from Aquasonic called The Whole Idea. Upon first glance, this might seem like a pretty traditional crankbait, but upon further inspection, you'll notice a hole in the nose of the bait, which actually allows water to run through the bait coming out both the back and the belly. I think the premise of this lure is all about turbulence and try to make as much of a turbulence trail behind this crankbait as possible when it goes past. The Aquasonic whole idea was offered in a number of different lure profiles, including one very similar to a Bayou Boogie, a deep diving crankbait, and a shallow diving crankbait. But the one I choose to include on this list is this crankbait, A, because it's got the holes, but B, because it has one of the weirdest shapes I've ever seen in a crankbait. Underwater, it was really hard to tell how much disturbance was coming out of those holes, but it definitely had a tight little wiggle. And yeah, I've got a feeling that if you got this thing in the right depth, in the right time, a bass would jump all over it. The number six bait on this list is the second offering from Rebel, and this is a lesser known crankbait, the Weedless Fast Track. The Fast Track was an interesting line that came out from Rebel, which featured this really unique diving lip that came in a couple of different depth profiles. But this bait has to be the wildest among them. Well, first off, this is one of the few weedless crankbaits that I've ever seen. You can see it comes equipped with just a single downward facing hook, a couple of weed guards, and this really interesting skirt. This is a bait that I had never ever thrown before, so I was so curious to see what this did underwater. I don't know if it has to do with the lack of treble hooks or that skirt design, but the action on this was definitely much more subdued than any other crankbait that I threw. It's not often that you really get to analyze what crankbaits look like underwater. So seeing these side by side, it was really quite shocking. But under certain situations, that might be just what the doctor ordered. So in certain situations, especially around weeds, I totally would give the weedless fast track a throw. Before we get into the top five on this list, I do want to take a little pause and talk about some of the retro bass and gear we have available over at Texas Provisions. Just in time for the holidays, we restock just about every shirt and hat size that we have. So if you guys head on over to TX Provisions, and I'll drop a link down below, or better yet, I'll put one right there, uh, you can check out all the different retro bass and gear. Always popular this time of year is the Bass and Bud Starter Kit, which for the low, low price of 60 bucks, gets you a retro bass and shirt, the hat of your choice, two retro bass and decals, and a vintage lure from my personal collection. I am literally heading out to pick up the reordered shirts, everything from small up to 3XL next week. So get your orders in now and I will get those out the door to you as soon as possible. Moving on to number five in the craziest crankbaits in my tackle box. The next one is called the High Sport. This is a crankbait that I never have thrown before, but I picked up a few of these recently just because it's got such a unique, weird profile. It almost looks like a double-decker bus of a crankbait, and yeah, uh, I just was so, so curious to see what this thing would do underwater. While I was really curious to see how this bait would perform, nothing could prepare me for the absolute crazy action it had underwater. Jumping around like a pre-storm wiggle wart on hot coals, this thing was almost hard to keep in the camera frame. And I have no doubt that a bass would definitely clobber this thing. Question being, could those two little hooks that are on there actually do a job of securing that fish? 
Even though I had never really thought about throwing the high sport before, after seeing what it does underwater, I am absolutely gonna have it tied on the next time I do a little old school cranking. From one high lure to another, coming in at number four on the list is the Head and High Tail. This is definitely one of the more popular headens with the collectors, and I think that has to do with the fact that it's just one of the most unique looking crankbaits you will ever see. Equipped with just a single number six treble hook, uh, this is definitely one of the most unique crankbaits you will ever set your eyes on, and to me it sort of looks like a little whale. <laughs> Definitely not a bait that you see a lot of uh, on the water action. I think that has to do with the fact that it is a super collectible bait. And if a lot of the head and guys saw me actually throw this thing, they might have a heart attack. Underwater, the high tail did not disappoint. And it turns out that it is a sweet little wake bait. You would have to fish this thing on some pretty light line. I'm thinking 10 or 12 pound test max, but at the right cadence, it definitely scoots along the surface and that tail actually looks like it's pretty functional, almost acting as a reverse keel as it goes through the water. This is definitely a bait that I would throw in the warmer months. It might be a little bit late this time of year, but the head and high tail might just be worth a dangle next year. Number three on this list is, without a doubt, one of my favorite gimmick crankbaits of all time, the Prez from Cotton Cordell. This little one-third of an ounce crankbait was made in tribute to President Jimmy Carter, who was a peanut farmer in Georgia. If you have any doubt, here is a campaign pin that I picked up. It is a smiling peanut from back in the day, and <laughs> you see the resemblance? Here's the bait out of the package, and yeah, you can see it is definitely a, a little goober with a nice smiling grill on the bill. <laughs> I think it does have a little rattle in it, and it's actually got a nice action underwater. The bait dives about one to three feet, and if you were to fish this thing on 10 pound test in the right conditions, I definitely think that you could tempt a bass or two on a peanut. Like some of the other gimmick lures, it initially only came in one color variation, but eventually the Prez was offered in a number of pretty wild colors, none actually any more realistic. <laughs> some like gold and fire tiger. While I have never actually caught a bass on the Prez, uh, it does seem like it would work under the right conditions, and in fact, the one that I filmed with, I still got tied onto my crankbait rod because I 100% am gonna catch a bass on that thing. The crankbait in the number two spot on this list comes to us from fabled lure designer, Tom Mann. Tom was known for making a lot of great crankbaits. Tom was known for some amazing worm creations like the jelly worm. And this next lure, the hard worm, combines both. It's got the look of a man's jelly worm, even with the old stingray grub tail, but it's a crankbait. The hard worm came in a number of different color variations, each more outlandish than the next, including this one, a sort of silver shad with a chartreuse tail, chartreuse in black, bone and flow red, and silver. <laughs> Check that thing out. I really did not know what to expect when I tied the hard worm on, but underwater, it has a similar action to the whopper stopper, almost a forward swimming Senko. It definitely has more of a quiver than anything else. And if you're ever looking to throw a crankbait the bass have assuredly never seen, the hard worm might just be your bait. But of all the crazy crankbaits in my tackle box, uh, there's really none, at least in my mind, that can compare to the number one bait on this list, the Head and Big Bud. I absolutely love crankbaits, 
but this lure will always hold a very special place in my heart. It is just such an outlandish bait, a crazy design, and the thought that you would ever throw a lure that mimics a beer can for largemouth bass. Combine the unique shaped head and lip, that crazy blade on the back which flaps, doesn't spin, and you have the ingredients for perhaps the greatest gimmick crankbait of all time. While the Big Bud eventually fell out of favor in the US market and was discontinued by Hedden, the lure still has a lot of popularity overseas in the Japanese market. There you can find Big Buds that look like this, where they've really taken the basic design of the Big Bud and just done some crazy stuff to it. I've thrown the Big Bud on a number of different occasions, but until I really looked at the underwater footage, I had no idea how cool of a crankbait it really was. First off, that flapping tail almost works like a keel on the bait, and it definitely throws a ton of flash, but because of the fact that it doesn't spin, it actually churns the surface a lot more. Occasionally dipping up there, grabbing some air, and you can see by the pretty massive bubble trail on this thing, uh, that blade flapping versus spinning is probably one of the keys to success for this bait. While not your traditional crankbait by any stretch of the imagination, when the fish are shallow and active and you want to throw something different, maybe this bud's for you. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that underwater footage of the top 10 gimmick crankbaits in my tackle box. I would love it if you would drop a comment and let me know which of these baits you would like to see me fish with next on Retro Bassin. If you like the fish at old school, I'm talking about classic rods, reels, lures, and equipment from fishing days gone past. Consider subscribing and be sure to hit that bell icon so you don't miss anything. If you're looking for some more old school content, click right here. Otherwise, I'll see you right back here next week, same time, same place. And until then, keep the carpet side up. And definitely, fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin.